This is the second recording in our We the People series to get ready for the We the People competition. This recording is going to go over question number two. So if you're on team number two, then this is the recording for you. If you need to take a second, pause the video and make sure that you are to Moodle. And when you're ready, click play again and we'll start from here. Once you've gotten to Moodle, click on my class website. Like Right there, there we go. Let me turn my editing off. All right, here we go. And if you go down to Unit 3, our document here that's going to help you along is in the We the People Documents folder. If you click on the December hearing questions, then it will download and you'll have a chance to open it up. And this is the document that's going to guide you through your question. Question number two is on page number two. We'll start by reading through the question and then we'll start breaking it down and seeing if there are any uh, confusing pieces of the question and uh, try to help you through those confusing parts. So question number two. The Articles of Confederation were the first of two blueprints for a United States government. Although the Articles had serious weaknesses, government under the Articles should be credited for some important achievements. What were the major defects of the Articles, and why did they impede the development of a national government? What were the major achievements of government under the Articles? In what ways, if any, are the weaknesses of the Articles comparable to the weaknesses of the United Nations and or the European Union? So let's start by looking at a couple words that may be confusing to you as you read through that question. Some of these words will be found in your key terms to know in the comments section on the right is where I've given you those definitions. So let's start with blueprint. What it means by a blueprint for a United States government is basically a plan. Although the article had serious weaknesses, government under the article should be credited for some important achievements. So credit, credited sound, uh, means exactly what it sounds like. It means to give, uh, give praise, to give, um, basically to give the credit for something to give them their props for doing what uh, it said that they did. So the articles, this question is saying, have done certain good things for our government, so you need to find what those good things were. Next, what were the major defects? That means the major problems. And why did they impede the development, which means to get in the way of the growth of a national government? Moving down to the first bullet point right here, what were the major achievements of government under the Articles? Nothing terribly confusing there. Achievements are good things. And the second bullet point right here, in what ways, if any, are the weaknesses of the Articles comparable to the weaknesses of the United Nations and or the European Union? For many of you, this will be the most uh, confusing part of the question because you may not know what either of these two organizations are. Start first off with the word comparable. Comparable means to be similar to. So this part of the question is asking how the government under the Articles is similar to the government under the United Nations and or the European Union. A little background on the two, and you can read more about them at uh, document number three and document number five below. The United Nations was formed after World War II. The goal of the United Nations was to help Europe and all the countries in Europe to live peacefully together and to provide a government body that was over all of the nations that would allow uh, one nation who was upset about something that another nation did. The United Nations was supposed to be an organization that could help resolve conflicts before it escalated and grew to the point where nations wanted to fight a war with each other. The world had just finished with two world wars and was completely sick of fighting world wars. So they wanted to find some organization. Now the problem was the United Nations has no authority to do anything that it was set out to do. So if the United Nations wants to punish the United States, it can't do that unless the United States agrees. And the United States probably isn't going to agree to punish itself because that's not in its best self-interest. So the United Nations was given a lot of cool sounding ideas but it was never really given a whole lot of power. The European Union is a more modern organization. It was began in 1993 and its main purpose was to tie the nations again in Europe together economically uh, which means to make them 
uh, more independent on each other's economies because war is, among many other things, really bad for uh, the economies of the countries that are involved in the war. So if, for example, Germany were really involved in the economy of Greece, which they currently are under the European Union, then Germany has an interest in not going to war with Greece because that would, in turn, hurt Germany's economy. So the European Union has successfully tied a lot of European nations together economically, and that bond has grown into a political bond. So you can read about each of those, and on the last part of this question, try to compare the United Nations and the European Union to the Articles. The key similarity between all three of these governments is that none of them that the job of the executive branch is to enforce the laws that the legislative branch creates. Well, the Articles of Confederation didn't create an executive branch. It didn't exist at all. And that's what led to things like Shays Rebellion, where states like Massachusetts were upset about things that the national government was doing, and so they rebelled. And they took over an armory in Massachusetts, and there was nothing that the national government could do to stop it. Well, the same thing has happened to the United Nations. If, let's say, a country in southern Asia had a problem with something that the United Nations had decided to do, such as whether or not the United Nations joined in helping with the recent tsunami efforts in the Philippines. There's nothing that the United Nations could do to punish that uh, Asian country uh, for going against the power of the United Nations. It's got no strong executive uh, to enforce any of its laws. The same with the European Union. The example I talked about earlier was Germany being connected to Greece. Well, if Germany decides not to help Greece out, again, in the European Union, there's no strong central government to make Germany help Greece out. There's only an incentive uh, that Germany would help Greece because that would in turn help Germany. But if Germany ever decided not to help Greece, it's not illegal. It just would help. It would make the entire European continent a little bit weaker and might in turn lead to some discontent, some hurt feelings, and maybe eventually a war. So again, the European Union, like both the United Nations and the Articles of Confederation, has no strong central or national executive branch that can keep everybody doing the same thing. There are six documents that you can read through, and none of these are really documents. They're more information. Uh, the last four, three, four, five, and six, are all on the United Nations and the European Union because you probably don't know a whole lot about them yet. The, the key documents you'll want to read here are number two, number four, and number six. And those cover the weaknesses of the Articles, the United Nations, and the European Union. So as you read through, the, through those documents, make sure you're taking notes about what similarities you see between all three. We already talked about some of the key terms. If you have any questions, just Google any of those, and you'll be able to find a lot of information on them. Lastly, what I give you here are three key things that you need to do to really answer this question well. So the Articles of Confederation came immediately after the American Revolution. The colonies were very afraid of a strong national government because they didn't want the national government to start acting like the British government, which they had just rebelled against. So they made states very, very strong, and they made a very weak central government. It existed, but not anything like what we know of today. There was no executive branch. There was only the legislative branch and the ju judicial branch. So, the first thing you need to do is summarize the strengths and weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. Don't just focus on the weaknesses, which we studied a lot of in Unit 2. Also focus on some of the good things that the Articles of Confederation did, such as giving the states lots of power to kind of form their own identities, which was really important at the beginning of our nation. The second thing you need to do is you need to become familiar with the United Nations and the European Union and how they work. Compare what you find to the structures of the Articles of Confederation. There are a lot of really good YouTube videos out there, and if you need my help finding some of those, I'd be more than happy to help. But you need to be familiar with how those, how, how those government structures work. They're both pretty simple, and they're both very similar to the Articles of Confederation, so that shouldn't be too hard to do. You just need to find the time to do it. And number three, you need to make a prediction. The Articles of Confederation fell apart pretty quickly. Only about a decade after they were created, Shays' Rebellion occurred, and the nation realized that something stronger was needed, 
and so they called the First Continental Congress, and that eventually led to the Second Continental Congress and led to the, led to the writing of the new Constitution. So the Articles of Confederation fell apart. So if that happened to the Articles of Confederation, do you think that's going to happen to the European Union or the United Nations, either or both of them? The European Union is pretty new. It's only been around since 1993, so it celebrated its 20th, 20th anniversary this year. The United Nations, on the other hand, has been around again since the 50s, so it's been around for over 60 years. Does that mean they're going to last forever? Not necessarily. So make a prediction in whether or not you think that the United Nations or the European Union will continue to exist as we know them, or will they fall at some point and a new world government will be created that has some kind of enforcement powers like what happened to the Articles of Confederation, which fell and were replaced by the Constitution, which then created a strong executive branch to enforce the laws that were created. Good luck with this question. That's a, this is a really cool question where you get to apply what a lot of the founders were thinking about after the Articles of Confederation to a situation that's going on today with the United Nations and European Union. Good luck, and I hope you do really well with it.